It's really difficult to write videos like this, especially so as this is a very sensitive and sentimental topic to me. Plus, there is a lot of pressure on me to make it the best I possibly can, as you've all been waiting a very, very long time. No matter how many times I revise this script, I will ultimately be dissatisfied with the result, feeling as if there were a few things within the deep recesses of my mind I failed to conjure into words. This is an extremely important milestone for me, as today is December 8th, 2023, and exactly 10 years ago on this day, I created my YouTube channel known as Mr. Pikminator. Starting from the very beginning, I was no older than 4 years old when I began watching YouTube. This was the era in which Let's Plays were at their height. In particular, one Let's Player known as Chugga Conroy resonated with me more than any other. I rewatched his playthroughs of my favorite games countless times, and he was my first true idol. I wanted to be just like him. So, equipped with a horrible, cheap, Nerf branded camera, I began recording my TV as I played on the Nintendo Wii. This was sometime back in late 2011 or 2012, and all but one of these videos have been lost to time. I am extremely grateful to have recovered at least one of those videos, and I'll always treasure it forever. But this is when it all began. I didn't know what I had started, and I was far too young to understand any concepts such as viewership and maintaining a following. All I knew was that the mere act of uploading videos like my hero Chugga Conroy brought me joy. Minecraft had also started to become extremely popular around this time, and I, like any other kid at the time, was desperate to play it and record videos for my channel. However, I could only watch as my grandmother's card was declined by Mojang for some unknown reason. Because of this, I was never able to play Minecraft, but with some routine searching, my grandmother had discovered an alternative for me. Roblox. On July 13th of that year, my Roblox account was created, and thus this tale truly begins. On December 8th, 2013, this channel was created. This was shortly after I made a discovery that, at the time, was nothing short of revolutionary. No longer would I have to use an extremely low quality camera to record my screen, as Roblox had a built in video recorder. I promptly made use of this, and being the extremely gleeful and ambitious child I was, declared that I would make over 500 episodes on Roblox in the wake of this discovery. On December 10th, my first video, Roblox Episode 1, was uploaded. Mr. Pikminator had just begun. Using the in game chat to communicate with my then non existent audience, I was overwhelmed when my video broke 10 views. I uploaded several Roblox episodes in the coming days, all in quick succession and sometimes even making several uploads per day. It was all fueled by passion. A passion to create and share my experiences with the world. I met two of the first people I called friends over the internet here, who we'll call David and Zaylin on Roblox. And only God knows where they are now, but it comforts me to think that they are doing all well out there. We chat every day and go on fantastical adventures in the game, with me recording them for YouTube. I introduced my younger brother and my only closest friend at the time, Ben, to the game and subsequently recorded episodes with them. I had little care in the world for how many views I got, and if I had even been successful in any capacity. All that mattered to me was that I was creating memories while giving myself a way to look back on them. Ten years later, I still look back on these videos. I miss these times so, so much. And that is the magic of YouTube. Even after all these years, I can still look into the window of the very distant past and relive these childhood memories. If there were any word to define this era of my YouTube life, it was persistence. Persistence, as in I never faltered. I continued to upload rapidly with few breaks, if any at all, and didn't care for how far it would get me. The only thing that mattered was that it brought me happiness, and I was excited to share the videos with my friends and family. After countless Roblox videos, the channel took a radically alternate direction. I began to use my iPad to record plushy videos, pretending that my cherished plush toys were talking to my still minuscule audience. I would record anything of interest me and my siblings were doing as well, in addition to recording playthroughs with my friend Ben. The chaotic assortment of random videos in this era goes to show my overactive imagination as a child, as my interests were always changing. From the very start, you can observe that my content has always reflected off of something else, content which I had consumed. By watching plushy videos, I had become very interested in making ones of my own. My production quality would remain consistent throughout, however, with many of these videos hardly getting 10 views or more. Despite that, it didn't matter to me. All that did matter was that there was a way to relive these moments again and again and again by uploading, no, preserving them on YouTube. The rate at which I produced these videos was astounding, as the low production quality made them very easy to make. There was hardly a day where I didn't upload, and again, I sometimes uploaded several times in one day. I tried everything under the sun, 
from reaction videos, more Roblox, of course, to long-winded playthroughs, and hell, even YouTube poops. However, everything changed in 2016 when a game called Hello Neighbor started making its rounds on YouTube. Upon seeing the game for the first time, I was immediately enthralled and had my mother purchase access to the pre-alpha. I promptly began recording. The funny thing is that, as tradition, we go to the beach every October, and we happened to be in our motorhome when I recorded this. I remember being so excited that I didn't want to wait to go home to play, so I came to terms with the obnoxiously loud fan that would plague the audio quality. Despite this poor production quality, which was consistent with my other videos at the time, this was my first video that truly did well. It broke over a thousand views in less than a day, and this was unlike anything I had experienced before. I was truly joyous. I felt that I had finally made it, and in a few days, I'd have claimed my throne as the king of YouTube and had thousands of new fans. No longer would I be stuck in my own world. People had finally found me. This one game had changed everything. I can't understate that enough. I recorded more videos on the game, all of which performed extremely well, and this game carved the foundation of my audience. Before I knew it, I had broken a thousand subscribers and continued to grow rapidly. Other popular games at the time, such as Tattletale, also arose, and I took an interest in them as well, attracting even more fans. Years of extreme stagnation and remaining in obscurity had come to an end. The algorithm had blessed me, and I was too young to understand the gravity of what I had just achieved. Without these games, I wouldn't be where I am today. I have everything and everyone to thank for them, as they introduced me to so many people. The years passed, and I continued to play and record the games I was passionate about. My Roblox episodes were performing better than ever, and of course, those indie horror games brought in all the views. I had become a popular figure in their respective communities, becoming a prominent modder for Hello Neighbor all the while. I'd do anything in my power so as to not let my audience down, and there were still hardly any long periods without uploads. My persistence never faltered. Five years later, I had amassed over 30,000 subscribers, nearly 15 million views, and a staggering 2,800 videos. People had looked up to me, sharing videos about meeting me in-game. And you know, that reminds me. Back in the day, a YouTuber who you may remember as Bear Ghost Games was in his prime, especially for his Roblox videos. He was one of my idols, and I looked up to him so much. I loved his family game night videos where he would record with his family. I would refresh his profile on Roblox several times throughout the day, every day, in hopes of finally catching him online. One day, it happened. I caught him in-game, playing Roblox Dodgeball. Eagerly, I relentlessly kept trying to join the server, manically closing and reopening the game client, and then... it worked. It worked! I jumped around and tried to follow him everywhere I went in efforts to hog as much attention as I could. With every day that passed afterward, I excitedly waited until the day had come. Family Game Night, Roblox Dodgeball, was uploaded to his channel. He was recording the whole time, and when I saw myself in that video, I felt like I had accomplished so much. And I had. Because he recorded that footage and uploaded it to YouTube, I have a means to relive that memory as many times as I want, whenever I want. That's what I meant about the magic of YouTube and how it can be a tool to reserve and relive your greatest childhood memories. I remember getting so many requests from fans to be in my videos, and I hope that I have given at least one person the ability to re-experience meeting me in-game and appearing in my video, just as I had with Bear Ghost. It's a very good feeling to know that people looked up to you. But as with any great story, there comes a tragedy. In the wake of a major scandal, YouTube implemented new policies curtailing young content creators and those perceived to create content marketed towards kids. The reasons behind this were so extremely complex and foreign to me at the time because I was still very young and emotionally driven. I was scared. Everything up until this point had sailed smoothly, having maintained steady growth and a robust audience. But the day my comments were taken from me, I was devastated. Suddenly, the only thing that connected me with my fanbase was gone. I went on a ruthless campaign to try and claim them back, but nothing I tried worked. The website which had brought me so much carefree joy had now betrayed my trust. No longer was I happy creating videos for myself and others, but rather, I was more concerned about taking back what was mine. Every time I attempt to put what I was going through at this time into words, I fail to properly convey it. I was becoming a teenager, and as you know, this period in life marks a great upheaval of change. My decisions were more rash and impulsive than ever, and after countless fruitless attempts to restore my comments, I faced the reality that they were gone for good. In retrospect, it's obvious that I overreacted, or if I had just waited a bit longer, something could have been done, but I didn't understand that. The reasons why this was happening were beyond my comprehension, 
Everything until this point had been so simple, but now I was so scared, confused, and hopeless. YouTube had erased years of engagement, years of my history, and enraged, I took drastic measures, and the actions I took proved to be an enormous lapse in foresight. On April 20th, 2019, after nearly six years of nothing but hard work and passion, I created my new channel, Anomalous Ducky. I had effectively thrown away those years of hard work in doing so. I urged every one of my fans to subscribe to my new channel. As I experienced radical changes in my own life, those changes were reflected in my hobbies. Therefore, I became highly experimental, starting out Anomalous Ducky with review videos and focusing more on production quality and attracting a more mature audience, a demographic I felt I now belonged to as a teenager. I felt that these truly wore greener pastures, and that I was destined to grow the new channel even bigger than the last. Then, on September 2nd, 2019, I created what would be my last video ever uploaded to Mr. Pikminator, shifting all emphasis on Anomalous Ducky. Nothing was ever the same. I was no longer a young kid, and I was maturing rapidly. Anomalous Ducky received very low view counts and subscribers comparative to my previous successes as Mr. Pikminator. The vast, overwhelming majority of you didn't even know that for the past four years, I had still been doing YouTube, just under a different name. And it's all my fault. I can't believe how few people knew. There was some hope found in a Roblox game known as Rise of Nations, with the videos on that game remaining the most popular on Anomalous Ducky by far. However, it never brought me the same joy that playing those Hello Neighbor mods in indie games did. The sense of community was simply lacking. It wasn't fun. If this was going to be my only successful form of content, I knew it wasn't worth it. And so, on New Year's of 2021, I went silent after one last upload. Absolute radio silence. This was completely unprecedented. There was no prior point in this hobby where I went on a long hiatus such as this. This was truly the end of it all, or so it seemed. Over a year later, on June 1st, 2022, I ended that hiatus with an update. An update reminiscing on all that had brought me up to that point. I began to work harder on videos than ever, emphasizing production quality and edits above all, and making videos with my friends. It was almost like the simpler times where I had little care for success. I only did what made me happy. None of those videos performed particularly well, at least not as well as I was doing prior to my hiatus, but didn't matter to me. The community felt more niche and closely knitted than ever, and I was grateful that I still had something at all left, even after all that chaos. I made a rather successful retrospective series in the Hello Neighbor builds of my childhood, and occasionally rewatch them even today, because I believe they are some of the best videos I've ever created. Over summer of 2023, I focused more on live streaming than creating videos. These streams were very fun as many of my old hardcore fans from back in the day and friends from the Hello Neighbor modding community would come to experience my favorite games along with me. I'm very thankful for everyone that showed up to them, but eventually I stopped doing even that. What happened, you ask? Well. I had finally regained access to the Mr. Pikminator channel by successfully resetting the password. In doing so, I was unprepared for what was to come. It was like I was digging up a grave by logging in. I never should have because it made something snap inside me. I can't pinpoint what it was, but whatever it was instantly killed all my motivation to continue the hobby. I wanted to call everything quits then and there. If I had any guess as to what it was, it was that we just didn't know how good we had it. We didn't know how good we had it. I've never reclaimed my former glory. Anomalous Ducky is only just barely about to break 2,000 subscribers in its four-year run. Compared to what I had achieved at Mr. Pikminator, it is pitiful. And if I had not been as imprudent and impulsive, I would have never abandoned Mr. Pikminator. Today, it is still one of my biggest regrets. I threw away that which I had worked so hard to achieve, at what cost. I was simply too young to understand concepts such as the importance of money. Now, I'm not sure if I should disclose this, but I was making good money, especially for how young I was. I was making $600 a month off YouTube, and all the money I'd earned had gone to my college fund. My job doesn't even make me that much. For the longest time, I had been vehemently opposed to putting ads on my videos, as I felt they inconvenienced my fans and went against what I stood for. From the very first day I started all of this, it was only for fun, a hobby. By monetizing my content, I felt I had gone against those values that the channel was founded upon. Eventually, I was convinced otherwise. Don't get me wrong, it never was about the money. But money is what makes the world go round, especially today as life gets ever expensive. 
But $600 a month would do a lot of good for me and my family, to put it mildly. Severing the thread remains one of my most selfish acts to date. All I wanted was my comments, my method of interaction with my fan base, and I suppose I got what I wanted. But again, at what cost? If I tried, if I truly, really, really tried, I could have rebuilt from the ashes. I know I'm capable of making great content. I've proven that to myself countless times, but I just can't bring myself to do it, at least not anymore. It sucks so much because my motivation to create is all but withered away. I want to create, but I procrastinate, not to mention the priorities and hurdles that get in the way. And I've been doing this for so long that the burnout is severe and long-lasting. It sucks so much. That brings us to today, the 10-year anniversary of my YouTube career. I've been doing this for well over half of my life, and it's been a turbulent yet amazing journey. 10 years of YouTube, 10 years of memories, 10 years with everyone I met along the way. It has been an honor, as always. When it comes to this hobby, everything has always been uncertain. Uncertainty of how long I will keep going. I can't say for sure if I will make any more content or live stream occasionally, or if this will be the last video I ever upload to this website. I originally wanted to have a grand stream in celebration of this monumentous occasion, but by the time late November had come, I was panicking, realizing that this day was so much closer than I initially thought. I still can't believe it's here myself. I hadn't given it any thought until it was far too late, and that just goes to show that the passage of time is much faster than you believe. It really has been 10 years since I started all of this, and that is truly remarkable. I started when I was 7, and now I'm 17. So much has changed in a decade. Something I've noticed is that no matter how many times I tell myself that this has to end eventually, something makes me crawl back to this website every time. It's like I can never truly leave, as I would be leaving behind an amazing legacy. Considering all we have achieved in these short 10 years, I'd say we've done a mighty fine job. Nearly 3,000 videos later, consider this my final farewell. With the utmost sincerity, thank you. Everyone who has ever watched my content, thank you. I'm eternally grateful for all of you and everything you've done for me. Thank you so, 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 so much. Mr. Pikminator, out.